Hella. Questions are directed. Sorry, I'm saying uh, Honorable Governor for uh, Hella. Oh. Anger, I'll ask the next. Well, I'm Chief Lohela, so <coughs> I'm going to ask him to tell uh, him. Thank you, Excellent Speaker. Uh, Lord, given this lot of time. Uh, my question uh, without this, I uh, wanted to ask Trust Robert. <coughs> I think I'm asking two related questions. So, uh, as a shareholder of uh, state owned enterprise, uh, enterprises uh, or Kumuru uh, companies, uh, Prime Minister, can help uh, Trustra and he can take note. Uh, Prime Minister can help uh, answer uh, my two simple questions. In today's paper, we uh, read about <coughs> National Gaming Board uh, making a revenue of uh, 456 million kina in just uh, uh, nine months. And this is equivalent to about 50 million kina a month. And by the end of the year, we expect to raise about 600 to 700 million kina. Uh, in last year, we read about Octary uh, delivering about 400 million dividend, and about 180 or 190 million went to state. And of that, about 100 million paid to 102 million, I guess, was paid to state, and uh, 88 million kina withheld by uh, Kumul Mining Octary Limited. Uh, Kumul Petroleum Limited, uh, in 2022, earned about uh, 1.48 billion and paid uh, 400 million as dividend to state. Uh, BSV dividend and all other SOEs, when you put together, it ranges well over 5 billion kina. And this is equivalent to about 20% of our 24 billion kina budget. So my simple question to Prime Minister is, does the government uh, have any plan to consolidate or pull all the state revenue uh, into, like, uh, or from all SOEs, uh, BSV dividend, Octary, Kumul companies, and put them to support the national government budget rather than allowing uh, individual boards, statutory organizations, and uh, boards? Uh, and keep certain percentage or a bigger portion of the money. Uh, and my question is, does the government have any plans to pull all the resources together uh, rather than allowing them to keep much of our revenue in different boats and we go to external loans and other means uh, and incurring a lot of cost to the nation? So that's my first question. My second question is, uh, back in this year, March 2023, governors have passed a resolution regarding uh, provincial government uh, empowerment uh, and uh, decentralization of powers. Uh, our number one resolution was uh, about financial autonomy. And there are multiple issues uh, within that regard, uh, that context, but uh, one significant uh, issue that been debated last few uh, weeks and months was about uh, insufficient funding goes in, going into police. Uh, Hella, for instance, only receives between 10 million kina to uh, 20 million kina every month with a population of 500,000 people. <laughs> Five, 500,000 people with a population of 500,000 people. You're giving 10,000 kina every month. What are they going to do? My PVC is going to do with 10,000 10, kina every month. Uh, we are here, we have allocated a you know, big portion of money to the police department, ranging from 400 million kina to 600 million kina, promising to this nation that we will modernize police after year after years. And we are not seeing any modernization going on, and money is, uh, you know, uh, keep on uh, being absorbed in the, in, the, uh, in, in the headquarters. The policy is a, it's a classic example, but all the departments are misusing and abusing funds that are supposed to trickle down to every department, every province, and every district. And so we have pushed for a long run, starting with police. And so what is your government doing about this? And are we seeing any changes happening starting 2024 budget? Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Speaker. Honorable Prime Minister. All right, thank you, uh, uh, Assistant Speaker. 
Mr. Thank you, Lord. Governor of Longhella, he asked him uh, uh, two black question that uh, crosses between really a couple of ministri ministries. So let me shoot him question, come me, now let me try him long back him to two black question. Pass them through long issue, long uh, 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 all money where all state owned enterprises uh, raise him, most uh, particularly. Uh, all companies where as Prime Minister, where designation law office me hold him, uh, me trust his elders. Uh, all particularly Kumul Minerals Holding Limited, uh, Kumul Petroleum Holdings Limited, as well as Question Block and Long uh, National Gaming uh, Control Board. Long all manual working, whether government he got visibility. Uh, long all this plan, me like indicating that government he got visibility. They all, uh, companies as well as the National Gaming Control Board, they all operate under their own charter and they all operate under their own respective uh, governing acts of parliament uh, that relates to how uh, the monies are accounted for, monies are expended. Uh, long, the two Kumul Minerals and Kumul Petroleum Holdings, since we arrived as government, uh, we installed a dividend policy uh, that today trustee minister delegate as well as the board chairman only operate within this ambit, long ensuring that the floor of revenue, the comeback, long uh, internal expenditure, we place set him under the guideline for dividend policy. And for the record, I think I did made an answer to the parliament in a question uh, sometimes back, but just for the record to satisfy this question. Uh, let me indicate to this house and members of parliament that both Kumul, Kumul, uh, the Kumul Minerals Holding Limited as well as Kumul Petroleum's uh, holding limited, as well as the other uh, uh, public companies under the words of Kumul Consolidated Holdings Limited, we have given a guide in terms of dividend policy. 60% of all monies made uh, should f come back to Wagani public accounts as revenue of state. So 60% of all money made. 10% uh, are uh, uh, earmarked for the administration. Uh, cost long running multilateral company. 10% we buy if I set him a combined. We're in the process of setting a combined uh, 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 structure or look at them all, supporting all churches and communities. More importantly, uh, to acknowledge the fact that God gives these resources. Uh, we want to structure a, a facility where 10% of all earnings from our resource projects are geared towards a structure where Council of Churches, Body of Christ and Evangelical Alliances, all our Christian faiths are able to sit under the structure and we support the work of churches uh, in our country in addressing some of our social issues. Uh, there's a place for a church to address, especially the work of work, work, Papa God, Lord Grow. And so 10% for community funds, uh, uh, as I made mention earlier, 10% for the administrative cost. 13% uh, would be set aside for the companies in terms of the reinvestment, uh, for the reinvestment portfolios. Uh, these companies, uh, there's a call on, a cash call on them for them to reinvest in projects or continued projects that are running. And so 13% is to be saved in, uh, or to be kept aside in a reinvestment uh, funding or investment funding. And 7% of uh, the fund is to be put into the Somewhat Well Fund that we have uh, partnering uh, Bank of PNG and we are setting up for the first time. Uh, governments of past have been talking about Somewhat Well Fund, uh, but we've all have been having a habit of just squandering and wasting. But we now thought, even in tough times like this, we must go into the culture of saving for the future. So 7% is meant to go in, and I just want to comment uh, Minister Dumas' leadership. There was an occasion last year when 7% of KCH earnings were uh, were, were uh, transmitted to a central bank facility that we have set up to start to uh, as a as an initial contribution for the growth of our sovereign wealth fund that we are partnering the central bank with. So, Governor Delu, to uh, to really uh, summarise your, your your questions, the main Kumul uh, petroleum and mining companies, we have a clear dividend policy. Uh, their boards have been directed to comply with the dividend policy, 60% uh, support of budget, 13% for reinvestment, 10% for the administrative upkeep, 10% for community uh, benefit funds, 
uh, more so to partner the churches, and 7% for sovereign wealth fund. That is the ambit in which the, our main Kumul companies operate inside. For the National Gaming Board, they, again, they operate through their own uh, board, and there's a community benefit trust fund that governs how they administer. I will ask the, the minister responsible for the National Gaming Board, uh, Minister Bougainville Lafes, uh, will report to this parliament as to the status of uh, the earnings from National Gaming Board, as well as the disbursement guidelines, the, the programs that uh, they engage upon throughout the country. But if some of you have noticed, there were uh, advertisements run under my instruction uh, that all who have received a community benefit fund must provide acquittal as to what they've done in our country uh, in the programs that have been supported. So advertisements have gone out for those who've been beneficiary to the fundings from the National Gaming Board. Uh, it is incumbent upon yourselves to acquit for the funds received. And, uh, and uh, again, if the program you're engaging is successful, you stand to attract continued support. But we want to also channel National Gaming Board into not just random spending all over the place, but a targeted social community program uh, that engages with youth and the community uh, for those who can receive, uh, receive benefits from uh, proceeds of gambling. And uh, mind you, at a time when there's an increase in revenue, uh, from gambling that shows that people are active in participating in gambling out there. And uh, I just want to, as a side point, indicate this one. Uh, I want to also, uh, on the blow grant uh, recommendation for uh, disbursements to the provinces, I want to assure all our governors, there's a governor's conference to be hosted by, uh, uh, together uh, by the governor of Morobe and the minister of internal uh, intergovernment relations uh, in Morobe after uh, towards the end of this month, I will be there to also be part of the occasion. That conversation on block grant uh, is looked at in the positive. Uh, however, we just need to be sensitive on some of the national functions, especially constitutional functions like police and others. We're trying to see whether uh, we could engage in this without tempering in the main intention of our constitutional provisions where uh, uh, constitutional functions remain a national government function and the administrative functions, especially at, uh, at, the, at the service, uh, the non-constitutional functions, uh, the provinces can be fully empowered upon. So that process of identifying what uh, funds that can be given through a block grant to the provinces where they administer, we support in totality, in principle, but the mechanics of making it come to work is to look at, and uh, I would indicate in the governor's conference on what areas uh, of funding you could receive uh, ASAP and what are other areas that we would need to uh, need to progress subject to constitutional amendments that uh, can take place or must take place before those actions are, uh, are uh, taken upon. But all in all, uh, empowering of uh, provincial governments is something uh, the Pango government and the coalitions are uh, in full support. Uh, we want to empower you. You get to work and to deliver to our people at the sub-national government level. Uh, that clarity will carry on and continue on. Uh, and before we come to budget 2024, uh, we want to attach with the budget documents what are areas of responsibility uh, through funding that we will also attach with that governors and the provincial government can handle. Uh, also clarifying what are the roles of the, of the districts and DDAs, especially in the funding uh, space, as well as uh, uh, elevating national government uh, focus areas and programs. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thought uh, these are uh, answers I would give, but if there are further clarities that I need to give, of course, I'm always available. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.